You were made for relationships that are full of love and life. And I think we all feel that deep within us. But the question I have for you is, are you experiencing that right now in your relationships? The research tells us that since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the U.S., marriages all around the country have been struggling. And today we're going to talk about these relationships in detail. So whether your marriage is struggling right now, or you know someone whose marriage is struggling, or you just want to be married one day, I think this video will be so helpful to you. Because here at Community Christian Anywhere, we want to help you experience the full and amazing reality that Jesus offers in every area of your life. Hi, my name is Heidi, and welcome to Community Christian Anywhere. Welcome to Community Christian Anywhere. We are an online community of people who believe that even though life can be difficult, complicated, and tiring, we have found a life that is light and easy and full of rest in Jesus Christ. Let me be clear. The life Jesus offers isn't simply a membership to a religion or a personal philosophy of life, but He invites us into a community where we can all be transformed into people who live just as He did by forming our lives around Jesus' central command to love everyone just as He loved us. One way we can do that this week is by supporting a great organization that is doing something about the problem of poverty in our world. Every day, the Salvation Army tries to meet people's needs in a variety of ways. And one way they do that is through clothing donations. On Sunday, November 22nd, we will be collecting clothing to donate to our local Salvation Army in Coweta County. If you're able to drive to our church office, please bring nice and gently used clothes in a bag or a box to our church offices on or before Sunday, November 22nd. And if you don't live local to Coweta County, Please just join us by donating nice and gently used clothing at your local Salvation Army. In this age of social distance, this is a great opportunity for us to join together to do something to love others as Jesus has loved us. And no matter who you are or even what you believe about God, we want you to be a part of this Jesus community to love everyone always. In fact, one core belief we hold is that no matter what you think about God, we believe He can't stop thinking about you. We believe He is for you and He only has good things for your life. And we hope that this video gives you a glimpse into our community and motivates you to take a step into joining us as we discover all that God has in store for our lives and our world. So I wanna ask one thing from you. No matter where you're watching this from, on your porch or on your lunch break, on the beach, we believe that God is present with you right now. And I wanna ask you to stay open to that reality because I believe if you can be open to that truth, He has something He'd like to say to you today. And if at any point during this video, you have a question or maybe you feel God is speaking to you and you want to talk to somebody about that, there will be a number on the screen the whole time. You can text that number at any point and our speaker from today will respond as soon as they can. If you're watching this in one of our live streams, we would love for you to engage with our community right there. Because even though right now, this is just a video you're watching, we're hoping that your interactions with us move from just being content that you consume to a community that you're committed to. And we would love to help you take a step into community today. So we want to offer you a $10 DoorDash gift card just for starting a conversation with us. If you're watching in one of our Facebook live streams, simply direct message our page or comment in the chat the words, I'm hungry. Or if you're watching on YouTube or not during one of our live streams, simply text the number on the screen with the words, I'm hungry right now. And if this is the first time that you've communicated with us, we'll send you a free $10 DoorDash gift card. We're serious about you taking a step into community and you can trust us because we do not joke about food. And if you're with us all the time, you can still play along and just comment in our chat what food you're craving right now and join in the discussion with others. 
It's a great way for this experience to move from just being content that you consume to being a community that you're committed to. So take a moment to do that. And while you do that, let's get into our main idea for the day. Well, hi, I'm Jason. I'm one of the pastors at Community Christian Church. Thanks for joining our online experience today. You know, I recently came across an article it appeared in the New York Post just last month, September of 2020. And with all the bad news that we've been getting during the COVID pandemic, this was something new that I hadn't heard much about, and it concerned me. It made me wonder if we as a community of Jesus followers have been paying enough attention to this. So let me read to you the opening lines of this article that I found. Divorce rates have spiked in the U.S. during the coronavirus pandemic as couples have been stuck at home for months. The number of people looking for divorces was 34% higher from March through June compared to 2019. The combination of stress, unemployment, financial strain, the death of loved ones, illness, homeschooling children, mental illness, and more has put a significant strain on relationships. The data showed 31% of the couples admitted lockdown has caused irreparable damage to their relationships. So reading that article made me wonder, how about you? How about your marriage or your relationships? Are you feeling any strain or struggle during all these changes that we're experiencing in our world? Do you sense that your marriage has been a little bit harder than it was last year? Or you just get the sense that you could be doing better? Listen, there's a number on the screen, and at any time, you can text me and share your answers to those questions. Or if you have a question about anything we're going to talk about today, text me, and we'll start a conversation. Now, I'll bet some of you are thinking about hitting the stop button right now and logging off because you're not married, and you're thinking that maybe this talk really doesn't apply to you. But I really want to encourage you to stick around. See, if you hope to be married one day, or if you're watching someone you care about try and figure out a marriage, or if you're raising somebody who might be married in the future, I think what we're talking about today is more than worth your time. But for many of you, I don't need to invite you to lean in and listen. <laughs> because the truth is, your marriage is barely holding on right now. You're not sure how much life your marriage has left in it. And you're just so thankful that we're talking about it. Because today might be the answer to your prayers. Because it could be the start of you figuring some things out. This could be the start of the healing process for you. Now, here's the part about marriage that nobody likes to talk about. Most people walk into marriage believing a lie. Actually, we believe a set of lies, but they're linked together. Here's what I mean. There's a particular lie that most of us believe before we get married. And we carry that expectation with us into the relationship. And then after a few weeks or a few months or sometimes even a few years, we actually trade that lie for a new lie. And that lie can undermine and dominate the marriage. Here's the first lie most of us believe before we're married. I have to be married to be happy and fulfilled. And that's a lie. See, you can be married and be very unhappy and very unfulfilled. Some of you know this because you're living it right now. And if your spouse is in the room with you, don't agree with me or nod your head or anything right now. But on the other hand, you can be single and be very happy and very fulfilled. In fact, did you know that the Bible teaches that marriage is not for everybody? See, a lot of Christians start to get this idea that marriage and family, it's God's plan for everyone. That's just not true. Some people aren't ready to be married, and some are never ready. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. In fact, Jesus said this, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage isn't for everyone. <laughs> But if you're capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, do it. See, marriage is the most demanding, sacrificial relationship you can ever enter into with another human being. And not everyone should do that. 
But if you're capable of dying to yourself and living with another person and for another person, then marriage, it's a wonderful thing. But there's another reason that not everyone should be married. And it's because some people are called by God to live a life of singleness. And this is almost never talked about in churches. And it's really a shame because many people have been made to feel like, well, they're less than or their lives are incomplete simply because they're not married. But what if your life was meant to be lived like Jesus lived? What if your life is meant to experience deep relationships, friendships, community, and love, but outside of the bonds of marriage? You know, the Apostle Paul wrote about this in one of his letters to Christians, and he said, Sometimes I wish everyone were single like me, a simpler life in many ways. But celibacy is not for everyone, any more than marriage is. God gives the gift of the single life to some, the gift of the married life to others. Now notice, he calls both married life and single life a gift. Neither one is any greater than the other. And you're no better or worse if you choose marriage or if you don't. You are guaranteed no more or less happiness if you're married or if you're single. But so many of us as young people and as single adults, we buy into this lie that I'll never be truly happy. I'll never truly be fulfilled if I don't get married. And here's why that's so dangerous. Once you believe that lie and it gets deeply ingrained in you, here's what happens. You start getting older. You get through high school and then college and then you start a career or whatever you do. And then there's no ring on your finger. Or you get divorced for a year, three years, five years, 10 years and nothing. And because marriage is the key to your happiness, you start to lower your standards. You broaden your search parameters on Match.com. You overlook character flaws. You ignore immaturity. You rationalize irresponsibility. You start accepting things in a mate that were totally unacceptable to you before. And you pursue marriage at almost any cost. And again, why wouldn't you? Remember, it's the key to happiness. And then once you get it, at some point, it hits you. Marriage didn't bring me ultimate happiness. You're still not fulfilled. It didn't give you what it promised because you believed a lie, remember? Remember I told you there was a second lie that follows right behind that one? See, if you go into marriage with the belief that it will bring you happiness and fulfillment once you get married, then there's another lie you'll start to believe, and it's this. If marriage is meant to make me happy and fulfilled, then this person that I married, they must make me happy and fulfilled. I mean, it's their job, right? My spouse is supposed to meet my needs. They're supposed to do things that will bring me this happiness and fulfillment that I've been expecting when I got married. Now, let me just say here, there is some truth in that. You know, whenever the Bible writers uh, speak to husbands and wives, they say things like this. They say, wives, accept the role that your husband plays in your marriage. Understand him, support him. They say, husbands, care for your wives like you care for yourself. Be considerate of who she is and what she needs. But does that mean your husband or your wife is responsible for meeting every need you have? Can you expect to have all your emotional, relational needs met by your spouse? No. See, when you carry that first lie with you into marriage, you'll naturally place that expectation onto your husband or your wife. And it is impossible for them to fulfill that expectation. I mean, unless your life is the plot of every romantic movie ever made, and if you hadn't figured this out yet, I hate to break it to you, but romance is nothing like the way it's portrayed in your favorite romantic comedy. But here's the tragic and really sad part of all of this. Here's how this plays out in a real marriage. You believe the lie that this person you married is responsible to fulfill your needs and make you happy. And of course, it doesn't happen. So when your needs aren't met, you suddenly become the victim. You've been ripped off. You were shortchanged. You didn't get what was promised to you. So what's the solution? Well, at first, you start to pout or sulk or you withdraw. And you subtly let your partner know that well, you're not satisfied with them. 
And when that doesn't work, you start berating them, badgering them because they're still not giving you what you expect. Pretty soon, you find yourself thinking about and imagining a marriage partner who will fulfill you, who will make you happy. You fantasize about the marriage that you hoped for in the beginning and who that person might be that would make you happy. But you see, that person doesn't exist and they never will because, again, it's a lie. So, is that it? Is that all there is to it? Is this just a stiff dose of reality that's supposed to wake me up to the fact that marriage isn't supposed to bring me happiness and fulfillment? Am I just supposed to go home to my husband or my wife and say, well, honey, that's it. Doesn't get any better than this. If I'm single, am I just supposed to give up on ever being happily married? Well, the good news is this. No, that's not all there is. That's not all that comes with exposing this lie. But here's what you will find. Once you expose the lie that marriage can't bring you ultimate happiness, it actually frees you up to go back and look into what the Bible actually does teach about marriage. And when you do, you see that there are needs that marriage is meant to fulfill. The only one who can satisfy the deepest longings of our heart is the God who made us. And in the person of Jesus, we see the heart of God for us in the clearest way possible when Jesus went to the cross on our behalf. The measureless, infinite love of God overcoming all our failures and shortcomings. The boundless love and favor of God breaking down all the barriers between God and us. And this wasn't simply a one-time event. The love of God displayed on the cross is a never-ending reality of a life in relationship with God. A lot of things have changed in our world, our lives, and our relationships since March when the pandemic hit the U.S. But one thing that has never changed is God's heart of love for each of us. And I get it. If you're here today and you're not sure what you believe about all of this, it might be hard to see this as anything more than wishful thinking. As we listen to this next song, I want to invite you to imagine that it might be true. And what could be different about your life and your relationships if you didn't look to any other person to satisfy the deepest desires of your heart, but instead you found all that you need and the God who loves you. Too good to be true. I pray that you'll begin to hope it's true. And maybe you'll take a moment to reach out to us through Facebook Messenger or in our live chat or by texting the number you see on the screen. We would love to talk to you. And for followers of Jesus, as we listen to this next song, praise God for what His infinite love has done for your life and remind yourself where your source of love and life is really found. madness all around me. I feel you here when my world falls apart. As I walk, I know you will go before me. When I fall, I can feel your hand in mine. You're never too far away, far away.
So what are the needs that marriage is meant to fulfill? Well, one of the best things I've ever read about this topic is a pair of books written by author and researcher Shanti Feldhahn. Her books are called What Women Want and What Men Want. And here's just a quick summary of one of the points that she makes in those books. You know, study after study has been done and marriage experts have all weighed in on this and what they all find time after time is really the same thing. It basically comes down to this. He needs respect, she needs love. See, the number one thing that husbands say is this, I just don't feel like she respects me. And then the number one thing wives say, he doesn't love me. And you wanna know what's so fascinating about those statements? That's actually what the Bible teaches in regards to what husbands and wives ought to bring to the table in marriage and what they should expect from one another. In his letter to the church in Ephesus, the Apostle Paul writes several paragraphs to husbands and wives on how they ought to relate to one another. And then, like any good writer, he sums it all up in one final sentence and he boils it all down to the basics. This is the one thing he wants us to get out of all of his advice to married couples. Here's his summary sentence. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So you see it? She needs love, he needs respect. And although there are always exceptions to this, generally speaking, 
These two things run deep into the hearts of both men and women. In fact, there was a national study done on 400 men and they asked them to choose between two hypothetical life scenarios. They asked these men, would you rather go your entire life being lonely and unloved or would you rather go through life being disrespected and feeling inadequate? Choose one or the other. Three out of four men said, that's a no-brainer. I choose to be lonely and unloved every day rather than feeling inadequate and disrespected. Then they asked 400 women the same question, and I'm sure you see where this is going. It was the exact opposite response. The majority of women said, as long as I can be with and feel love from the one that matters most to me, the one who cares for me, then I don't care if I feel inadequate and disrespected. See, it's just who we are. It's how we're sort of wired up. So why does it surprise us when we open up the Bible, which is inspired by the God who made us and who created marriage in the first place, and we find that the two needs that exist in men and women and the two needs that which, we, which can be met and ought to be met in marriage are love for her, respect for him. It just makes sense. So the question is, how do you do that? Well, I want us to break this down into practical steps that you can take, and I'm gonna start with the husbands. Guys, I wanna give you five things that you can focus on that will cause your wife to feel loved by you. Now, I know that five is a really a long list. It's really too many for us guys to handle, so here's my advice. Listen to all of these, write them all down if you have to, and just pick one or two. One or two of these that you would say, yeah, I'm not doing that one very well right now. And then you just take the next few weeks and you work on those one or two things. Now, if you're single, this is your future to-do list if you ever do get married. So, husbands, here are the five things. Number one, be close. See, our wives feel loved by us when they feel close to us. And that means physical contact and touch particularly the non-sexual kind. Reaching for her hand, a touch on her back, sitting close to her on the couch, a kiss as you leave the house. Anything that communicates a sense of being close or just affectionate. Number two, be open. And this includes being transparent with her about what's going on in your world, in your mind, in your heart, your emotions, which means you're gonna have to talk to her about more than just the day-to-day -day stuff. Talk about what's going on in your world when she's not around, what you think about stuff, what you're concerned about, what scares you, what excites you. Number three, understand her, which means you have to stop trying to fix her and just listen to her. When she tells you something, give her some indication that you've heard her. Put down your phone. Make eye contact, ask questions. Let her know that you're trying to see things from her perspective. And number four, loyalty and commitment. See, she'll know that you love her when she knows you're committed to her above everyone else. And part of this means we need to be conscious of how we interact with other women. Husbands, we should go out of our way to show our wives that no other relationship even comes close to holding the priority that we hold for our marriages. That no matter what, we are on our wives' side. We're on the same team, especially when it comes to the kids, if you have them. Guys, we have to make sure that our kids respect and obey our wives because that's part of our loyalty to them. Now, I often get some pushback for saying what I'm about to say, but I really do mean this. My relationship with my wife comes before my kids. Because see, one day, our kids are gonna leave our house and it's just gonna be me and her. And our relationship has to be nurtured and strengthened because we are the glue that holds our family together. My kids, they're gonna leave and pursue whatever God has waiting for them, but I'm committed to her for life. And finally, number five, need to cherish her. This means you speak highly of her in public. Don't put her down as a way to get an easy laugh from your friends. Protect her integrity. 
Be kind and affectionate to her in front of other people. Communicate to her that she's not taken for granted, but that she's valuable in your eyes, that she is worth the effort. So, how about it, guys? Did you find one or two weak spots that you can work on? In fact, text me. Tell me about them. Or, or maybe you have other ideas that you'd like to share with me. I'd love to hear about those too. And maybe you could teach me something. Okay, now it's the wives' turn. How do you show your husband that you respect him? Now, I actually have six for you ladies because, well, you could just juggle more stuff than us guys, right? <laughs> but just pick one or two and spend some time on these this next week. Or, again, if you're a single lady, this is your future to-do list. Number one, appreciate his desire to work and to achieve. You know, so many men have their worth and their self-esteem tied up in their work. Now, right or wrong, that's just how we're wired up. Tell him you value his work effort, that you have faith in him. Number two, appreciate his desire to protect and to provide. Don't ever insult his job or his position or the amount of money that he makes. Many times when you do this, it's like you're just ripping his heart out of his chest. Number three, appreciate his desire to serve and to lead. Let him know you appreciate his strength and that you count on him. Praise his good decisions and then be gracious when he makes bad ones. Whenever you disagree with him, always do it in private. Always show honor to him when you're in front of other people. Number four, appreciate his desire to analyze and to counsel. Thank him for his advice when he gives it instead of acting like he doesn't really know how you feel. And just realize that his problem-solving approach to life, that's actually his way of showing empathy towards you. And number five, appreciate his desire for shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder friendship. Ladies, you wanna know a secret about men that comes right out of the research? For the most part, your husband knows you love him, but he's not always sure that you like him. Now I want you to just imagine how that must feel for a man to live with. So see, what this means is you need to be willing to do things with your husband that you can enjoy together. In other words, find some common interest and just simply have some fun together. And finally, number six, appreciate his desire for sexual intimacy. And, and that means respond to him sexually. It means initiate sex with him. This communicates to him that you desire him, that you respect his needs. And one thing to understand about your husband, he needs sexual release just as much as you need emotional release. So, wives, did you find at least two or three things you can do this week? I'd love for you to text me some of your thoughts as well. Now, let me wrap this up with a couple of final thoughts. There's one area where this whole thing we've been talking about is going to start to break down. In fact, if you're struggling or if you're distant in your relationship right now, what I'm about to describe is probably the reason why. Wives, when you don't get love from your husbands, you know what your natural response to him is? Usually to disrespect him. Husbands, when you don't get respect from your wives, you wanna know what your natural response is? You withhold love. It's a really vicious cycle and it literally tears marriages apart at the seams. No love, no respect. No respect, then no love. And it just goes around and around and around and the needs that can be met in marriage often aren't met and then both sides wind up miserable. And here's the key to this whole thing. If this is ever gonna work, somebody has to go first. Even if he gives you no love, wives, you must start by respecting him. Even if she gives you no respect, husbands, you need to start by loving her. You will never get, you'll never get out of this cycle if you go with the whole thing of, well, I will if she will, or I will if he will, or what's even worse, I'll show him respect when he deserves it, or I'll show her love when she becomes lovable. It is not gonna work. Being happy in a marriage means I go first. And the great news is we have an example to follow. God first loved us. See, when we were unlovable, 
unrespectable, unworthy, undeserving. Jesus came and he loved us first. That's what the death of Jesus on the cross was all about. While we were still sinners in rebellion against him, God went first. He came for us and he gave his life, revealing once and for all his great love for us. Now, in just a moment, we're gonna meditate on that love by receiving the elements of communion. Now, this is something Christians have done for thousands of years. We take these elements of bread and juice that we eat and drink in remembrance of Jesus sacrificing his life so that we might have life eternal with God. But for just a moment, I want you to imagine, what if he had not done that? Imagine if Jesus had waited to love you until you deserved it. Well, we'd be still caught in that cycle that we often find our marriages in, and there'd be no way out of it. So, husbands, let's follow the example of Jesus. Let's step up and go first in loving our wives. And wives, step up and go first in respecting your husband. And one last thing I wanna say. I know that marriage can be hard. <laughs> My wife and I have been married for 23 years, and we have certainly had our share of ups and downs. And I know that just listening to me talk about this, it's not gonna magically fix all your marriage problems. I get that, but we do wanna help. So if you and your spouse would like to receive some specialized coaching on the specific areas that you're struggling with, or if things are going pretty well in your marriage, but you'd like to kind of grow and get, and get better on, on that, or even if you're dating and you wanna get ready for marriage and make it the best that it can be, we have a free resource that you can do together without ever leaving your home. It's like having marriage training seminars on demand right there on your computer or on your phone. You watch these 10 minute training videos together at your own pace and they help you start meaningful conversations with one another. And as you work through them together, myself or someone from our staff, will check in with you. We'll guide you for as long as you need us to. And all of it, can be done virtually. Here's what you need to do. Just text the word marriage to the number on your screen and we'll help you get started. Now you can also go to our website, cccanywhere.com. Click on that link that says marriage help and you can find out more and you can even set up a time to speak with me. Listen guys, marriage in the age of COVID, it can be hard, but we wanna help you break the cycle of strained relationships. So. I hope you'll reach out today and you'll allow us to do that. Go ahead and text me or visit the website right now. And while you're doing that, we're gonna sing a song today about the great love of God that went first for us. And if you'd like to join us in taking communion, you can go ahead and receive the elements of bread and juice or whatever you have on hand during this song while we sing together.
Your love was victorious when you became one of us. You shined your light into the world. My sin no longer holds me now. I was rescued when your love came down. I was lost, but now I am found. Your What if it's true that God wants to be the source of love and meaning in your life? And out of that love, you would be able to fill your marriage and every relationship with joy and peace and life Jesus provides. So for many of us here at Community Christian Anywhere, we've found that discipleship, learning from Jesus in every area of our life has filled our life and our relationships with what Jesus would call full and abundant life. And we'd love to help you find that as well. Because as we've said throughout this experience, we want your interactions with us to be more than just content you consume, but a community that you can be committed to. And we don't believe that one video you watch is going to change your life, but if you can get involved in a community of people to walk this out with in your life, it will change everything. So you can always text the number on the screen to talk to our speaker today. In fact, if you want some help for you and your marriage, would you text the word marriage to the number on the screen right now? And we'll be in contact with you soon. We would also love for you to take a moment to go to our website, cccanywhere.com, to find out how you can get more connected with us here. There are a lot of resources on that website, including some materials specifically designed for your children and ways for you to support our church financially. Not because we need your money, but because a part of loving and following Jesus is supporting the body of Christ, His church. And one way we can do that is by giving a little of what God has given us back to Him. There's a way that you can do that on cccanywhere.com. But the best way to get involved with our community is by clicking on the card on cccanywhere.com that says, join our Facebook group. That link will take you straight over to our Community Christian Anywhere group, where if you click on the join group button, you'll take one easy step towards getting more involved with our community, where we can connect with each other throughout the week. I hope to see you there, because I hope this isn't the end of your interaction with us today. If you're watching in one of our live streams, we're going to leave our chat section open for about five more minutes, and we'd love to have you continue to connect with us there. In fact, we're going to put up some discussion questions based on today's video, and we hope that you'll answer right here with us. And if you're watching this on demand, please take a moment to text the speaker for the day through the number that's on the screen, or message us on Facebook with your answer to the questions, or just to let us know what was meaningful to you today. Maybe how we can get you better connected with our community here. Because God has more in store for your life and your marriage than what you're currently experiencing. And through our community here, we want to help you experience that all that God has to offer you. Because no matter what you think about God, 
We believe he can't stop thinking about you. 